What's up guys, welcome back. Out in tide pools again today. Hopefully we're gonna do a little bit of catching and then hopefully we're gonna do a little bit of cooking. So I don't do a lot of catching cooks on my channel, but I got an interesting idea from this guy I met while I was fishing the other day. He said that his favorite way to eat eel is to actually smoke it. So uh, I, don't know, I never really heard of it before, but after thinking about it, it might be pretty good. So anyways, it's almost low tide. I think it's about one o'clock now and low tide is at two o'clock and it's not a super low tide so it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge but I think we can get some eels out here. So got my poke polling set up over here, a little bit of squid. Let's go see if we can find an eel. All right, so if you've never seen a poke pole before, it's basically just what it sounds like. It's just a rod and it could be any kind of rod. You can even just use a piece of you know, a wooden stick if you wanted to but it's basically just a stick with a hook at the end and that's my squid right there and so basically the idea behind this is you don't need anything fancy all these eels are hanging out right in these tide pools like this one right behind me here and you just stick this in between the crevices of the rocks and then those eels will come out and grab that squid now normally eels as far as I know in the wild they only pretty much eat squid every time you clean one and you know cut open the guts it's all or sorry I say squid I meant seaweed it's all seaweed in the stomach but for some reason whenever you dangle a piece of squid in front of them they can't resist it so anyways nice little pool right here try this out for a little bit kind of poke around these rocks see if there's one in here and if not we'll move on go to the next hole and see if we can find some catch of the day not what we're looking for here but there's a ton of other wildlife and you know crabs other stuff in here so this is a red rock crab probably extra keeper size but you cannot catch these with a hook in line so we have to release this guy first catch no skunk I don't think there's any eels in this little pool seems like there's just crabs in here so let's move on to another one a little bit high. The tide's a little bit high for this spot. You can see the water still flowing through here pretty good. But I do like the rocks in here. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a needle in here somewhere. So I'll just start here for now and then as the tide goes down it should get better and better in here. Oh, there you go. I think that's a needle. Feels like a needle. Right away, right away in there. Pretty sure there's a needle in there though. what that is some little sculpin of some kind I don't think this is what I was eating it the first couple times but it could be a baby cabazone but I don't uh, you know what maybe it is I'm not really sure but anyways it's a little sculpin of some kind cabazone or not but uh, you know not what we're looking for today we're looking for eels so we'll let this one go I knew there was an eel in there. This is kind of a small one. I don't know. We could cook this up. You know, what? I'm gonna put this in a little tide pool over here. We'll keep it on the side if I catch a bigger one. Oh, look at that. It just spit up the squid that I was using before. So this is the guy that was eating my squid the last couple of times. But, oh yeah, see, all the squid's coming back up. One piece of squid there. There's my second one, and then the third one I was using for bait. So we got all our bait back at least. I'm gonna put this guy in a tide pool over here. 
we'll keep them on the side for now. If I catch a bigger one, I'll let this one go. If not, at least we got one to uh, take home for the, for the smoker. So there we go, first monkey face eel right there. They're not actually eels, but they just look so much like eels. Probably whoever was the first to name these thought it was an eel. So anyways, put them in the tide pool. Now I wouldn't do that with a normal fish, but these eels are super hardy. They're designed for these tide pools or they evolved you know, specifically to live in these tide pools. So they can live even out of water, I think for over 24 hours. So anyways, he'll just be fine in there, in that little tide pool over there. So we'll keep exploring, see if we can find a bigger one. Sculpin. I'm not sure if these are cabazo, baby cabazo, maybe. Oh, there's a ton of them in the hole. Another one. This is a kelp fish. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is a little kelp fish. What is that? So we got the sculpin, rock crab, eel, and now this kelp fish, fourth species of the day. I'm not, yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not 100% sure on the kelp fish identification, but not an eel, and not a sculpin either. All right guys, well, tough fishing. Only got one eel. I did get a bunch of other stuff. Rock crab, that sculpin thing, and then I think it was a kelp fish, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but at least we got one eel. So we'll take that home. We'll flay him up and get him ready for the smoker. All right guys, so I got my eel filleted up right here. Those four pieces, each fillet cut into half. And now we're gonna brine it. So if you never smoked any fish, first step before smoking, is you have to brine it and that sucks out a good portion of the moisture out of those fish fillets same thing with salmon and this guy that was telling me about this smoked eel he uh was saying you just oh by the way i think his name was frank shout out to frank i don't even think he watches this but on the off chance he sees it appreciate the uh, suggestion but anyways um normally i brine with like three parts sugar one part salt but i'm gonna brine this one for like 36 hours, which is pretty long brine, I think. So I'm doing a little bit less salt so that the uh, fish doesn't get too salty. Just want to coat the fish. Do it as evenly as possible. Spread that out. And that's it. We're going to stick this in the fridge for the next 36 hours. So it's the next day, and we're gonna see how this brine is going. And, oh wow, interesting, all right. So, I mean, they were already kind of small to begin with, but now they're really small, they've really shriveled up, so I'm guessing that's because the eel have really high water content, probably, in their meat. So once all that gets sucked out, there's not as much left. So anyways, I'm gonna set these out on the grill here and let them air out for a little bit. And I cut each fillet in half, but maybe I should have just left them whole. I didn't really know they were gonna shrink this much. But anyways, I'm just gonna set these out on the grill for about 30 minutes, 45 minutes, so they get a nice tacky outer layering. I'm not gonna lie, we're not super confident, but uh, we're gonna stick with it, follow through, and we'll see how this ends up. All right, so we got our coals heated up here. Now we're just going to drop our fish in there. 
Now we're going to position these as far away from the coals as possible so that they're not hit by the direct heat. And uh, normally it'll take a couple of hours to smoke fish. Like I've done a smoked salmon video on my second channel. By the way, if you want to watch that, I'll leave it linked in the description. But I think this is only going to take like 30, maybe an hour at the most because these fillets are so thin. Oh, one more thing I almost forgot. We have these smoking chips, which I've soaked in water overnight. And we're going to drop these right on the coals here. And the reason why you soak them overnight is so that they don't just immediately catch catch a flame, catch a fire. And this way they'll smoke for a little while before totally burning up just to give the fish a smoky flavor. But anyways, cover that up. Just leave a little crack on the side with the fish so that all that smoke will come over to this side and then you'll be good to go. All right, so every 30 minutes I'll put a little bit of honey. Just use a little, I don't know if it's called a pastry brush or whatever it is, a little brush here. And just sprinkle it all over the, oh man. These fillets are so small, they it's gonna be hard to work with. But anyways, when I do with salmon, I'll just sprinkle this over the top. And if the honey is too thick, like we might have to do here, just mix it with a little bit of water. It makes spreading it over these things easier. But anyways, we'll cover it back up. You can see chips are creating a nice smoke there. Should be done shortly. All right, guys. It's been plenty of time. I think this has been on here for like an hour and a half now. And um, yeah, I mean, it feels done. I don't really know what I'm supposed to feel, but uh, there it is. Honestly, the eel wasn't that big to start, but man, it really shriveled up after smoking it. I was surprised. This is like, it's gonna be like a little bite-sized snack now. Here we go. Smoked eel. Trying to peel off the skin here. I don't know. It seems okay. I don't know. Honestly, it mostly just tastes like brown sugar and honey. I feel like the eel itself doesn't really have much flavor. I wouldn't say that this is my favorite thing. Okay, that bite tastes a little more like eel. I don't know why. Oh, there we go. The skin is like leather. All right, so my final thoughts. If you're going to try this, don't do it with a small eel. You got to get a good size eel to make it worth it. And I think if I brined it for a little bit too long, I'm probably, probably going to do it and do like a 12 hour brine. I've only had eel one other time and I wouldn't say that this is like way better than that time. I think the other one was actually better. So it was like my unagi, like knockoff unagi type thing. I think that one might've been a little bit better if I had to rank the two, but not bad. If you ever had smoked eel, I feel like probably not many of you guys have tried this, but if you've ever had smoked eel and see something that I did wrong, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll try it again. But anyways, it was a fun experiment. I mean, poke pulling is always fun for me. It's kind of like, the original fishing like when I was five years old if I knew poke pulling was a thing man I would have been like a poke pulling addict at that time and even now even at my old age still having fun getting out there you know sticking that pole in between the rocks so uh, yeah fun little video it's a quick one for you guys hope you guys enjoyed it but um, yeah we're gonna get back out on the kayak from our next one and it's gonna be a little bit of an interesting video we'll leave it at that but thank you guys for watching we'll see you on the next one